The reverse of the coin was designed by Walter Ott, an Austrian-trained master engraver, artist, and designer who worked at the Royal Canadian Mint in Ottawa. The design shows a constable holding a bamboo-shafted lance carried by members of the RCMP on horseback. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police's horse breeding program began in 1939. In 1973, 134,958,587 quarters were produced for circulation, and proof and specimen coins were also made. The design was changed up from a caribou to the mounty design, and the obverse die was retooled to ensure proper metal flow. The size of Queen Elizabeth II's obverse portrait was reduced to achieve fine details on the reverse, and the ornamental beading on the obverse was also modified. Virtually all of the 1973 RCMP Centennial Canadian Quarters were struck with the smaller busts on the obverse, but a small amount of the coins were produced with the obverse of 1972, creating the two varieties of the small and large bust. The amount of coins with the large bust does not exceed 10,000 according to the Charlton and PCGS guides and website. When the dies were retooled in 1973, it resulted in a smaller portrait of Queen Elizabeth II on the obverse of the coin with greater refinement to her hair detail. Another way to differentiate between the large and small bust quarter is by the placement of the beads and the top of the letter A in Regina. The large bust quarter has beads that sit close to the rim and the top of the A points directly to a bead, while the small bust quarter has beads set farther from the rim and the top of the A points at a spot between two beads. The size of the bust and position of the head on the coin are extremely important details. On the large bust, the beads will appear to touch the rim of the coin while there is space between the beads and the rim on the small bust quarter. If you're still unsure, one of the best ways is actually to compare it to a 1972 25 cent coin, which will have the large bust and bead arrangement as if it were the 1973 large bust. Now we'll get into the specifications and value of the 1973 Mounty Quarters. They are composed of nickel. The monarch on the obverse of the coin is Queen Elizabeth II. It has a weight of 5.1 grams. They have a diameter of 23.8 millimeters, a thickness of 1.6 millimeters. The coin is in metal alignment, as most Canadian coins are, and the edge of the coin is reeded. Now the Canadian 1973 Mounty Quarter comes in all three of the different Canadian finishes that were offered at that time. It comes in a business strike, which will get an MS designation. It comes in a proof strike, which will get the PL designation, and also a specimen, which will get the SP. Now, depending on the finish of the coin, it will heavily affect the value. The business strike is the most valuable of the bunch, but the other ones are quite valuable as well. And it's definitely a good idea to keep your eye open, especially at flea markets. And if you're buying coins in an estate sale or maybe in a lot on eBay. So in terms of value, the 1973 small bust business strike is worth around $1 for an MS60. And it can actually be worth all the way up to $61 for an MS65, now that is for the small bust quarter. Now, the 1973 large bust is worth $346 for an MS60 example, and it can be worth all the way up to $3,240 for an MS65. That is buku, insane amounts of money. Now, in my coin roll hunts, I have found thousands and thousands of the 1973 Mounty quarters. I still personally have not found any of the large busts. I have known people that have found the large bust before. If you were to find one of these in a high mint state, you can make some really good money off of it. And chances are, if you do find one of these coin roll hunting, it is probably going to be the business strike. Now let's get into the proof strikes. The 1973 proof strike is only worth around a dollar in a PL64. It can be worth up to $39.20 for a PL67. The 1973 large bus proof strike can be worth around $177 for a PL63 and all the way up to $677 for a PL67. So even if you were able to identify a set that contains the 1973 large bus quarter and you pay like a hundred bucks for it, if it's in decent shape, you can send it off to be graded by a company like PCGS, NGC, maybe ICCS, and make quite a return on the coin. Now, lastly, we will discuss the specimen finishes for these coins. First, the 1973 small bust. It's worth around $1.94 for a specimen 66, and it can be worth all the way up to $14.70 for a specimen 67. The 1973 large bust specimen 
can be worth around 173 for an SP64 and all the way up to $539 for an MS67. Now I've actually owned 1973 specimen sets. You can usually pick them up from your local coin shops for a pretty decent price. I'm guessing that they have probably done their due diligence and checked for the large bust already. So your best chance of finding sets that may contain the large bust quarter are probably in flea markets, estate sales, or maybe in a lot on eBay or Facebook marketplace.